Supernova fans, we have a big treat for you today. We're here with the very lovely and the very talented Milo Ventimiglia and Marcy Oka from Heroes. Thanks for talking to us, guys. Happy to be here. Absolutely. And you're here to promote season three of Heroes, which is screening on the Seven Network. Mm -hmm. It's going to air at the end of September or the beginning of October, is that right? It's just a couple weeks behind the US. Milo, I understand you've just finished shooting a feature film called Armored. I did, yes. Could you tell us about the film and the differences Um, between acting for TV and acting for a movie? um, I guess I'll actually start with the latter. Acting for TV and acting for a film, they're one and the same acting as acting. The only difference between television and film is you have a longer time to live with a character in TV and a much shorter time with a character when you're doing features. Um, But Armored is a story of a a group of uh, armored car um, uh, employees who decide to knock off one of the trucks and steal the $42 million that's in the trucks or something like that. Um, And I play a police officer who responds to a call and I kind of get shot and laying bloody, dying in the back of one of these trucks for most of the movie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the funny part was that we spent so much time in, I spent so much time in blood on <laughs> Heroes that being caked in blood uh, on this movie wasn't too bad. What does it jarring. feel like? Sticky. Yeah. It's very <laughs> sticky. It looked great. I actually had an opportunity to visit <laughs> yeah. Milo on set and came it by. looked fantastic. Yeah. We'll see. Very different character too from a hero. Too. Yeah. Yeah, from the hero. So. Mm-hmm. Shows you the versatility of uh, Mr. Ventimiglia. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And Marcy, you also have a, another facet to your career uh, as well as acting. You work for Industrial Light and Magic, yeah. an effects company. Can you tell us about that company and what do you do there? Uh, well, Industrial Light and Magic is a George Lucas's special effects company, and they do a lot of the practical and the computer graphics effects, uh, not only for Lucasfilm's properties like Star Wars, but you know all over the you know this, all the studios. Whether well, it's like we've done Pirates of the Caribbean, you know Transformers, some of the big budget stuff, as well as some of the independent stuff. And what I do is uh, what's called a Regent Research and Development Technical Director, or what I used to do. Uh, and it's about coming up with the programs, uh, writing the programs to create the effects. So a practical example for like Perfect Storm, where we have big, uh, we need to do digital water. They say, hey, we're going to have a lot of shots to do it. Can you help us out? So I would do the research, uh, research my computational fluid dynamics. I would write the programs to, to uh, make it happen. And then I would give that to the artist. And they the artist can't even do the effects without him doing his work. So you're, first. you're building the, the tools. The tools, the exactly. Yeah. But the artists are the ones who create the images. You know, they fine tune it. They utilize the tools in such a way that I can never imagine, and uh, they make it work. You were just mentioning digital water. It's widely renowned as one of the hardest effects to do. Why is that? Uh, because it's what in real water. What happens is there's so much uh, interactions going on. You know, these are millions and billions of particles that are actually pulling on each other. And then there's so many, you know, the Nabi Stokes equation, which is the holy grail of, you know, fluid dynamics is what governs it, that has, you know, is so complex. You can't really generalize. You know, it's like taking analog into digital. Mm-hmm. You know, you have analog music, which is just like, you know, all this, but you have to put it in a computer, you need to digitize it. So imagine that if it's so precise, if you don't have enough, it's so hard to grab, grab, grab all the information and how to compute all these millions of it. Are you just laughing? <laughs> I'm just laughing because you're one of the smartest people that I know. That's great. And not only this, ladies and gentlemen, but he also speaks how many languages? As uh, well as Japanese on Heroes. Yes, I speak Japanese, uh, English, and uh, Spanish. Do you know how to say save the cheerleader in Spanish? Save the che- oh, you know, I don't know what the word of cheerleader is. Cheerleader. Do they have cheerleaders in Mexico? Cheerleader. Sure. Cha-cha-cha. Cha-cha-cha. All right. Do you miss doing that sort of hardcore geek stuff, or do you like acting better now? Uh, I love it both. You know, I you know since college, I've loved using the left side and the right side of the brain, and uh, I love the collaborative ex- aspect. You know, being behind the computers, I got to create something, and then see the artist use it. Very collaborative. Now, you know, the artists are creating something, and then we get to utilize the words and work with the crew to uh, make it work. And uh, I think Milo can agree that what yeah. we really love is that collaboration, creative aspect, yeah. and not just yeah. You know. Great group of people that we work with on the show that, you know, from from the directors that come in to the the gaffers and the grips and everybody that's a part of the process. It's 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 really an encouraging thing when you see so many talented people around you yeah. and you get to interact with all of them and they we're all building off of one another's strengths and and holding each other up during our weaknesses. So it's the the collaborative process of making the show is is 
pretty exciting. On the subject of collaboration, your character Peter has probably got the broadest journey of any <laughs> character in the show. Yeah. Have you had a, a lot of input into that? Um, we'll typically have conversations with the producers at the beginning of the show and, or beginning of the season and then usually in the middle. Um, and then they'll write the scripts and just kind of hand them to us. Uh, but they're, they're always willing to, to hear our thoughts and understand our feelings about our characters. And, and these are people that we've lived with now for two and a half years. And, um, uh, but, but in terms of, of how it all works and how much say we have, you know, it, I think we, we have to look at what's written first and then, and then interpret that. So this question is for, My, uh, for Milo from forum member Lucas Harper, All right, and his Lucas. question is, uh, <laughs> how do you view the evolution of Peter since we first met him in season one, and what changes would you like to see in the character, if any? Um, his evolution is, is very steady, um, but Peter's one of those characters that he's very reactionary to the situations that he finds himself in. Uh, I think if, if I could see him being more proactive that would make me happier. Uh, he'll, he, he's a bit of a lost little boy at times, mm -hmm. you know, wanting to do good but not knowing how to do good, uh, wanting to change the world but not knowing how to change the world. So I think proactively having that goal and stepping forward and saying, this is what we're doing and, and this is why I'm doing it, or not even justifying it, uh, I think it would be cool to see Peter go through that. Forum member Cube64 is wondering if humans ever did develop superhuman abilities, do you think they would be welcomed in society or be feared and hated? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Um, I, I mean, I think, it's, I, would, I, I, I hate to cheat and say both. I think the, everyone's always afraid of change, you know, and uh, yet they want the change. You know, there's hope in change when things are, you know, pe people, People welcome change, but at the same, you know, it's, it's, it's anything different that's out of the ordinary, is you know, people don't know how to react. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, having superpowers, I think, does benefit society because if used in the correct way, there's so many great things that could happen with it. You know, people with super memory, people who can fly, you know, people who can stop time, you know, I, they'll probably mess up a lot of things. <laughs> but there's, if people had these abilities and used in a good way, it can only benefit society. You know, whether society is ready for something like that, that I don't know. I think it'll take time to accept the change, and because uh, any time, any kind of change, people need some time to, uh, you know, adjust to it. But I really think uh, ultimately it would definitely benefit us. Hmm. And on that theme and your own um, heroic moments, for a member Pisces thirteen would like to know that if you had superpowers in real life, what would you what use them you? for? <laughs> well, what, so what would you use them for? What would I use them for? Oh, that's what, a... What would you like to achieve? Personal gain, Marcy. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> personal gain. Uh, you know what? These days, I'm kind of wishing I did have the power of uh, healing, like Blenderman mm -hmm. does, um, mm -hmm. and just go around and uh, be able to heal a bunch of diseases, you know. There are a couple of, uh, you know, charities I'm uh, involved in. One of them right now, uh, we're, when I go back, um, I'm sorry to plug this, but there's a an uh, event called the Stand Up to Cancer that's happening with all three networks, so ABC, CBS, and NBC. And it's all about bringing people together for uh, cancer research, and uh, we're doing a live telethon for that. And uh, that's something that's really close to my heart because it's something I'm personally going through with you know my immediate family. So right now, it would be nice to have that power to heal and just you know be able to you know, let the diseases you know go away. You know. And that's that is kind of for my personal benefit in that sense, you know, because it's you know something that's affecting me right now, you know, but there's so many other great powers, uh, like even we hear about Hurricane Gustav and all those things, I wish we could, if I could teleport people out, you know, literally, and Everybody help them hold out, hands. hold hands, <laughs> or be able to, you know, you know, just, I don't know, something you could just blast yeah. it away, there's so many great things out there that, you know, you wish you could do, so, but right now, you know, just personally, uh, healing would be a, a big power for me. How about you, Milo? Do you support any causes or charities? Um, I spend, try and spend some time with uh, uh, armed forces. I just went on a USO tour to Iraq and Afghanistan. I saw um. a lot of American, British, Australian troops uh, in a wartime effort as well as a peacekeeping effort in Afghanistan. Um, and I think for me, understanding that these people that serve our, our nations, that serve our countries, um, 
the sacrifices that they make and the sacrifices that their families make, I think generating a bit of an awareness to that, a thanks to that, um, making sure that they're not forgotten and that their, their cause, be it sometimes we don't agree with it, their duty to their country is remembered and they're supported and hopefully they can come home to, to welcome arms and opportunities that, that don't, um, don't uh, throw them into you know, a, a pit. So I, I think for me it's, uh, it's, it's not such a specific charity, but it's uh, an awareness to the people that, that serve our country. If I can switch gears to a lighter. <laughs> One of the more iconic things about your character uh, here in Nakamura is when he's using his powers, the, yes. the squinting. Was that your idea? Or? Originally in the pilot, it just says that Hero focuses really hard and and the, the cheeks wobble. <laughs> so you'll notice the first time he's ever used it, his eyes are open. Like when he's looking at the clock, yeah, his right. eyes are open. So it was shaking. supposed to be that and just shaking a bit. But I guess uh, it was hard to tell that, you know, and it, was, it gets hard to like try to wobble your cheeks every <laughs> single time. You know, after like 20 takes, like, okay, let's do it close up. You know, oh, yeah. Yeah. So, At the end of the day, Moss yeah. is like, hey, Mar, yeah. how are you doing? Yeah, no, <laughs> like, you so much that I can't. <laughs> exactly. So yeah. I think the writers kind of just said, you know, we want to have something, a visual cue, so the audience knows that, you know, you're teleporting or doing something. So we made an eye closed. You know, you know like Matt has. Oh, yeah. Throwing yeah, your hand, your hand out. Yeah. So it's Flying. better for a physical gesture to be doing this rather than, oh, yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one last question from forum member Matt Wells. What can fans expect from season three that they didn't see in season two? Say so expect the unexpected. Honestly, I think uh, people have ideas, directions they want the show to go in, characters they want to interact, uh, villains they want to, to either fall or succeed, but expect the unexpected. Have no idea what you're getting into and just enjoy the ride. Thank you very much, Milo right. and Marcy. Yeah. We have been Supernova Zone Black Canary. And Blunty. <laughs> and we hope to see you down again very soon. Sounds good. Right. Thanks for having Thank us. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right.